Good morning and welcome back to 10 Minute Wellbeing Tips for Managers. Today, we are going to look at social climate and morale again, but specifically, we're going to explore a topic that can be kind of challenging for us, and that is how we're able to learn from and let go of the past as we live through change and work towards future goals. Over the last few weeks, we've been exploring how as leaders we can support change in our work norms and in our practices to support well-being. But here's the challenge with change. While change represents a chance to try something new or achieve goals we've set for ourselves, change can also feel disruptive, frightening, unpredictable, or emotionally exhausting. And we may feel that we are being asked to take a chance with no certainty of success. So even though a simple Google search yields an endless supply of inspirational and motivational quotes about the benefits of learning from and letting go of the past, such as this one by Tony Robbins, these may discount the reality that this is not easy work. Whenever we embark on a change journey, we will bump into obstacles that challenge our motivation and our engagement. And several of these lie in how we think or in our mental models. So let's explore those now. The first is something we can blame on our brains. As humans, we are biologically programmed to pay attention to anything, that's, whether it's real or perceived, that challenges our sense of safety or survival. And this has been called our negativity bias. So we may hold on to the past because we remember negative experiences so clearly. And we feel the power of losses or potential losses much more than the promise of gains. And the psychologist Barbara Fredrickson has this wonderful quote that reminds us that the negative screams at us while the positive only whispers. This strategy that I'm going to offer you is called name it to tame it. Having a completely unexpected emotional response to letting go of the past is more frightening than having the same response if we knew it would probably happen. So if we can normalize the fact that fears and perceived losses will show up, we can reduce their power over us. It's kind of like turning the volume down on that negative voice in our heads. And when we notice ourselves wanting to resist change or hold on to the past, we can ask, what is it that I'm actually afraid of? Is it that I'm afraid of the unknown? Is it that I'm afraid of the uncertainty? Is it that I'm afraid that I'll fail, that I'll be vulnerable, that I'll lose things? Maybe I'll lose relationships or we'll lose resources if we change, or maybe we fear that we're gonna lose our choice or our autonomy or our status or our perceived competence. That list goes on. We can always come up with a huge list of fears, but it's important for us to be able to sort of think about, well, what is it? Because once I can name it, I can, I can shut it down a bit. Another strategy comes from cognitive behavioral therapy, the three C strategy. And that is that when we're able to catch our fear-based thoughts or our negative thoughts that have us want to hang on to something, we can just check on them. So if, for example, the fear is, well, we've never taken lunch breaks in our team before, and if we do that, our patients will be harmed. Well, we can actually check on that. Is that in fact true? And here's where the evidence base around breaks or stories of other teams that have implemented breaks successfully can be really inspiring to us. And then once we've been able to check our, our, our thoughts and our emotions associated with those thoughts, we're then able to change our response. So while we must acknowledge fears and losses, because they're always possible, we also need to be asking ourselves, what else is true about this change? What could we possibly gain? And if you find yourself at a complete impasse with your team, perhaps you could try something like a vision board. Whether you're trying to change something about well-being or something completely else, different, a vision board is sort of, it's non-committal. You can just put it up there, throw up your ideas, brainstorm, and just try things on for size. The other concept that we have to look at is this mental roadblock that of all or nothing thinking. We think that we have to let go of everything in the past in order to move forward, but that's simply not true. We may have to let go of something, sure, but then not everything has to go. 
Now, William Bridges, who developed a pivotal transition model, which I encourage you to look at if you haven't, said that transition starts with an ending and that this is paradoxical, but it's true, that the first phase of transition begins when people identify what they're losing and learn how to manage those losses. They determine what is over and being left behind and what they'll keep. And that may include relationships, processes, team members, or locations. So we don't lose everything. So in reality, we have some choice about what we take with us or what we leave behind. And as leaders, we can support our teams, reflect on our current skills, strengths, resources, relationships, and practices, and decide how we will carry these with us on this change journey, how we will invest everything we already have as we move forward with this change process. We can also ask ourselves, you know, could we take this with us just as it is, or are we going to have to modify it in some way in order to take it with us? Another important practice is to manage endings well. When we realize that we will have to let go of something, we may need to find a way to discuss and process this ending or this loss. And what I'm going to offer you here is the practice of honorable closure, in which we acknowledge and express gratitude for what this has meant to us in the past and how it has served us. This is not unlike the process we go through when we move communities or houses, you know, perhaps, or colleges or relationships. These served us well in the past, but they don't serve us well now. We're moving into something new that we're excited about, but we still want to remember the good in our past. Perhaps we want to keep pictures of it. Perhaps we wanted to create a memory book. It's a way that we honor what's been in our lives. Now, I'm actually going to, to suggest something to you that that may seem a little counterintuitive. And that is this, it is extremely important that we try and find gratitude in our change and what it is we're leaving behind. We want to find these hidden treasures in our past experience. Gratitude can be a powerful support when we need to let go of things. And it is extremely powerful perhaps most powerful, when we have to let go of things that were difficult, failures, losses, or negative experiences that hold us back. Many of us who have these negative experiences in our lives just hang on to the memories of those. But through reflection and gratitude, we can uncover the hidden treasures or gifts that lie in our past experiences. So I suggest asking this question about a previous experience. What do I know now that is serving me well that I would not have known without that experience? Or what can I do now that is serving me well that I would have never been able to do without that past experience? So this is a way of mining the, the gems in your previous experiences, even negative ones. And feel free to switch up those verbs. You know, what can I accept or what can I prioritize now that I couldn't? You just change up the verbs to suit you. So then here are today's tips that I have for you. Manager tip number 28 is to acknowledge that it's often hard to let go. Naming something often reduces its power over us. And then agenda tip 30, include opportunities to reflect on lessons learned and how you will use these or are using these to support your future work and growth. Next week, I'll be back with you to discuss how we look forward and the well-being benefits of having a future orientation. And as always, we encourage you to use and share the resources that you can find at Healthy at Hopkins and on the Office of Wellbeing website. Thank you for joining me.